Hi everyone, I'm picky expert Dr. Mara Padilla Evangelista Huber. I'm a board certified dermatologist, a certified dermatopathologist with a master's in clinical trials. Today, we are going to talk all about sunscreens. Let's start the discussion by talking about why we need sunscreens in the first place. Sunscreens protect us from the harmful rays of the sun, particularly ultraviolet radiation. There are actually three types of ultraviolet radiation, UVA, UVB, and UVC. UVC, thanks to the ozone layer, doesn't really penetrate into the Earth's surface. So the focus is on UVA and UVB protection. UVB has shorter wavelengths than UVA. UVB penetrates the epidermis, which is the upper layers of the skin, and it is the main UVR responsible for sunburn. It also can cause damage to our skin cells, which if unrepaired, can lead to skin cancer. UVA, on the other hand, can penetrate deeper into the skin, where it reaches the dermis, and that's actually where you find the collagen in your skin, which is why UVA is primarily responsible for the signs of photoaging, which manifests in the skin as fine lines, wrinkles, roughness, pigmentations like sunspots. UVB is usually called the burning rays because they're responsible for sunburn, and UVA is usually called the aging rays because they're primarily responsible for aging. But the reality is both UVB and UVA contribute to aging, sunburns, and also skin cancer. That's why it's really important that your sunscreen protects from both UVB and UVA. So for the next question, how do sunscreens work? The active ingredients in sunscreens are the sunscreen filters. The only two inorganic filters are zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. All the rest are organic filters. Just a quick review of what you read in sunscreens. When you see the term SPF or sun protection factor, this actually refers more on the UVB protection of the sunscreen. This doesn't really tell us a lot about how much protection the sunscreen provides against UVA. Other parameters describe UVA protection, such as the PA system, the PPD system, boot star ratings, and the presence of the UVA logo or the term broad spectrum sunscreen. Screen. Nevertheless, whatever the label protection in the bottle, this is only achievable if you actually apply the sunscreen correctly. And what does that mean? It means you're applying the right amount and you're also putting an even smooth layer on the exposed areas of your body. Based on laboratory studies, you have to apply 2 mg per centimeter squared of sunscreen to achieve the protection stated in the label. This roughly translates into one fourth teaspoon for the face, one half teaspoon for the face and neck, one half teaspoon for each arm, and one teaspoon for each leg, the front of the torso, and the back of the torso. In reality, however, only one half or one fourth of this recommended amount is actually applied by the user. And like I said, that really impacts how much protection you get. So it's really important that a, you apply the right amount, and B, you apply it the right way. It's very important to have an even smooth layer of sunscreen wherever you applied it. So it's not just enough that you have the right amount. You should also apply it as evenly as possible. And why do you have to do that? The skin is ridge-like. It has hills and valleys. So if you apply too thin of a layer, you might cover the valleys, but you hadn't actually adequately covered the hills. In fact, in laboratory settings where they test for the SPF, care is really exercised to make sure that the sunscreen is applied as evenly as possible. But we know, in reality, we don't really take that much care in applying our sunscreens. But it does really matter because it will equate to better protection. Sunscreen can be likened to a paint job over skin, where a single layer, especially on a rough surface, again like the skin, isn't really enough. But another layer, or even thicker layers, will give better coverage. It is going to cover all the hills and the valleys adequately so that even layer is achieved. 
Another thing to remember is that sunscreen needs time to be an even layer on top of skin. So this is actually the reason that we tell you to wait 20 or 30 minutes before you go outside or before you put makeup on top of your sunscreen because it takes time for sunscreen to set. It takes time for paint to set. So that's the reason why you need to wait and not because you want the sunscreen to activate. Another question that I get a lot from my followers is, do we really need to reapply sunscreen? Now sunscreen sits on top of the skin and because the skin is a pliant moving organ, naturally the things that are on top of it also tend to move. And remember, we really need an even layer of sunscreen for it to work effectively. But if that layer moves around, then that even layer isn't really achieved anymore. That is why we want to reapply. So the reasons for reapplying sunscreen is number one, to compensate for potential initial under application. The second reason is to replace sunscreen that might have been removed by movement, by sweat, by swimming, by sand, friction with clothing, or anything that might have brushed against the skin. I want to remind everyone that sunscreens are not complete sunblocks. Some UV radiation can still penetrate into the skin. And as I have mentioned, the efficacy or effectiveness of your sunscreen is very user dependent. In many cases, you are not really able to achieve the right amount or the right application to get that labeled protection on the sunscreen. Therefore, it's really important to do other sun protection measures. For example, avoiding direct sunlight as much as possible, seeking shade around the middle of the day, using protective clothing or protective accessories such as sunglasses, wide-brimmed hats, there are clothes with UPF ratings that you can also use. And actually, if you think about it, they might even be more effective than sunscreens in the sense that you don't have to remember to use them. You don't have to remember the right way to apply them. You also don't have to remember to reapply them, which is why it's probably just best to do everything that you can, all the sun protection measures that you can to keep Keep your bases covered. And what's the best sunscreen? It's the sunscreen that you like and will use every day. But some guidelines that are good to remember is that it's SPF 30 and above. It's broad spectrum, meaning it covers for both UVB and UVA. It's water resistant. It's suitable for your skin type, whether you're oily or you're dry. It's easily spreadable because that's how you actually get a nice even layer. And it doesn't irritate your skin. If you have sensitive skin, it's likely better to go with the inner organic filters like zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. The same recommendation also goes for pregnant women, breastfeeding women, and children. Unfortunately, these sunscreens also tend to leave a white cast. And if this is a concern for you, it's probably better to go with sunscreens with organic filters. There are sunscreens that have a mixture of both and you can choose whatever fits you best. Apply your sunscreens about 20 to 30 minutes before going out or applying makeup. It goes after all your skincare products but before your makeup so the order is skincare sunscreen makeup reapply sunscreens every two hours however whenever you're just indoors I find that a single application is enough especially if you're away from windows and direct light throw away your expired sunscreens the filters are not going to be effective beyond the expiry date store your sunscreens below 30 degrees celsius when you're outside keep them under the shade and don't store them in your car and lastly evaluate your sunscreen is it doing its job are you still getting sunburned are you getting new pigmentations does it feel nice does it look right because you have a lot of sunscreen options and if you're not happy with your sunscreen by all means find another one because the most important criteria criterion in sunscreen selection is something that you like and will use every day. If you want to know more about the science of skincare, you can follow me and Picky on Instagram or download the Picky app. Links are on the description below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to keep up to date with new Picky videos. Thanks for watching! Bye!